Those of you who have been following my channel for a long time and have seen the development of the Maglub antenna from its very first version, you know that I gradually improve it until the latest form of the MC20 version. By default, this antenna can be used for both reception and transmission from 7 to 30 MHz, and it is a simple loop version of the Maglub antenna. Using the current air capacitor and one loop, it is not possible to tune this antenna in the 60 and 80 meter bands. So I thought about how to extend these capabilities of the antenna to the 60 and 80 meter bands without much intervention in its construction. And so I came up with the idea to use the unique design of my antenna, in which the central core of the coaxial cable is used as a radiator and the braid is not connected to the circuit. So I decided to try an experiment in which I will use both conductors of this coaxial cable as two separate loops in such a way that the core of the coaxial cable will form one loop and the braid of the coaxial cable will form a second loop and both loops will be connected in series. It is actually very simple. I connect the first output of the air capacitor to the first end of the core of the coaxial cable. Then I connect the second end of the core to the first end of the braid of the same coaxial cable. And then I connect the second end of the braid to the second output of the air capacitor. In this way, I get double the inductance, but also the capacitance, which is naturally found in every coaxial cable between its core and the braid. I connected this modification using a double switch so that at any time it is possible to switch the antenna to its original state of 40 to 10 meter bands. But after switching, a double loop version of 80 to 60 meter is created. It remains questionable how effective this antenna is when transmitting on 80 and 60 meter bands using this experimental connection. In any case, it is great that after the modification, this antenna can be used at least for reception on the 80 and 60 meter bands, which was not possible before. So, Let's take a closer look at what this experimental modification looks like and how it worked for me in practice. So, and I'm currently at uh, my garage and uh, you can see that it's uh, dark already. So, um, it's actually about or around 8 o'clock p.m and it's getting dark here also inside my garage because we're still uh, working on it so it's still no uh, light over here in this room but here you can see these MC20 uh, Maglub antenna with the modification here on the side it's yeah I know it's very hardly to see but it's cl right close to this radio which is on the window and here let me show you how narrow is this antenna currently on 80 meters it's very very sharp as you see that it's just a few kilohertz uh, sharp the antenna on 80 with this configuration and you can uh, even notice this uh, little hill 
in the background noise which is caused by this uh, cure which is very sharp and uh, here in the center is the strongest signal and here it is a little attenuation and let's see how it tunes on receive and possibly to make any contact Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango QRP Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango QRP All right, I don't think that this guy is listening to me. He's also beaming west, which is opposite direction of me. Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango, Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango, QRP. Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango, QRP. Alright, so another guy who do not copy my signal. I'm still running just the 5 watts. Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango, Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango, QRP. Yeah, 80 meters sometimes goes worse than the CB. Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango QRP QRP Alright, so actually I see uh, two main problems with QRP activity and 80 meter band. 80 meter band is very crowded band, many stations calling with strong signals, all on all frequencies all around uh, the band, which uh, makes the QRP very un invisible on the bands. If you are using a big antenna, you have also, or you are picking up much more noise than on uh, 40 or 20 meters. The second problem is that there are just a few stations calling CQ because most of operators on 80 meters are talkers. They are just, just chatting in their own languages and it's really difficult to break in or something like that. So also it's very difficult to find somebody who is calling CQ. But on receive, this antenna works really flawlessly. You can hear so many signals and stations here on 80 meters. And as you can see that um, the transmission is maybe not really the best. But I say maybe the problem is the noise. The recipient of the signal is maybe um, 
on a noisy place or something. So um, it's really uh, difficult to say that if this antenna is efficient or not. So I need to do more tests and um, maybe in one of my live streams. So let me check also 60 meter how it works there if there is any activity. So here I'm on 60 meter band and as you see that there, there is really no activity currently on the band. I can see just a digital signal and some S uh, or CW here. And here there is no SSB or upper sideband signals. So there is the FT8 only. And maybe some CW. And this is out of the band. So it's a very narrow band actually, 60 meter, and uh, there are just a few channels within the band, but currently there is no activity. Let me check also the SWR on 60 meter, which is a little wider than 80, but still very sharp. Also a few kilohertz wide band. But the SWR is pretty here on 60 meters as well. All right, so I was not really successful on transmission uh, with this uh, antenna modification. But of course, I need to do a little more tests, uh, maybe deal with some people uh, to have a QSO on the 80 meter band or here on 60 or probably I will do a live stream and we'll try and make contacts with you guys so um, thank you very much guys for watching I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, I hope to catch you again so you may be in my next one 73s and have a great day bye bye